Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Windows Nashville build 999. Now this build of Windows was a build that was in between Windows 95 OSR 2 and Windows 98. This was often known, not officially, but from the community as Windows 96, because it came out in late 1995, and this is what Windows 96 could have been. Now the ISO that's in the description, and which is the only ISO that I could really find, is an upgrade. You can't simply boot off of it and install it. So in order to actually install Windows Nashville as we'll be doing in this video, you're going to need a already installed copy of Windows 3.1 or Windows 95. From there we can upgrade. In this video I already have Windows 3.1 installed on this virtual machine, so we'll be upgrading from 3.1 to Nashville build 999. As I'm recording this video, this build 999 is the only known build of Nashville that Ever exists. We don't have any other information on Nashville, just this one singular build. Nothing else exists. Microsoft kept this really confidential, and still, they've kept it very confidential. At first, as you'll see when we get into the installer, it's going to be very hard to tell Windows Nashville apart from Windows 95. However, once we get in the operating system, we'll see some subtle changes. Alright, so the first thing that we actually had to do was go ahead and boot into our Windows 3.1 installation which we've simply done here. And now we have to go ahead and insert the Windows Nashville DVD ISO. So we go ahead and connect the Nashville build DVD, which I've already done that. And now we can go ahead and open up File Manager, go to our CD drive, which for some reason is R, and find setup.exe. Like I said, it says welcome to Windows 95 setup. It looks exactly like Windows 95 and has the same 95 setup. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue. We're going to accept this software license agreement. There's no product key for this build, which I find a little bit interesting and a little bit not interesting, you know? Again, references to Windows 95 everywhere. The setup really was not touched at all. We don't have to do this, so I'm just gonna do it anyway. It just takes a few minutes and if you're on a physical computer, obviously you'd want to save your system files, but we're in a VM, we can easily reinstall Windows 3.1, so it doesn't really matter. We can go ahead and just choose the same name we had for Windows 3.1, and just go ahead and click through, analyze our computer, do all this kind of stuff, just like we're installing Windows 95. Just for fun, we're going to go ahead and install Microsoft Mail and Microsoft Fax, because we can, and they're fun. So we're going to go ahead and of course click next and install the most common components. We can have a startup disk, we'll go ahead and do that anyway, and then click next, and now we're copying the files over. Now we can go ahead and just click cancel for this, and then OK, and we are just bypassed it, we're now installing Windows Nashville. Now that was actually only about 30 seconds and we've already installed this because the power of VMs are higher than what physical computers were. However, now that there is our DOS 6.22 startup disk, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our floppy drive and then click OK to restart the computer. From here, of course, it still says starting Windows 95 and even getting ready for the first time. I'm not, I have no clue what that graphical glitch was, but OK. We have to enter a work group, which we'll just put default and go ahead and go through that. Although our computer name and that can't be the same, so I'll do default one and then default. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Um, we just have to go ahead and click cancel and skip that. So every time we turn on our computer, we're gonna have to go through and skip a bunch of missing file notices. But other than that, that's, that's it. Those missing files don't necessarily do anything, and it's they're not that important. Now this is the Microsoft Exchange setup, which is one of the things that we, of course, enabled when we installed the operating system. So we're just going to go ahead and go ahead and next, next, and we cannot skip this. So we're going to go ahead and just exit. It will not let us exit. So we're just going to enter a random area code and a random one and click OK. So setup has finished configuring our system. We have to restart our computer for these things to take effect. Now, even here we can see this says Windows 95. Don't be fooled though, this is not Windows 95. Here are those messages that I was talking about. We can just go ahead and skip through these and we should be brought into our login screen. And again, it's telling us that there's more missing files, which the operating system works fine without them. And here we are. This is our Windows 95 or Windows Nashville desktop. So just off the bat, everything looks extremely like Windows 95, 
the start menu even says Windows 95. But I can assure you that this is not. When we open the MS-DOS prompt, we can see here that this is Microsoft Nashville. And we run ver, it says Nashville version 4.10.999. And just for some records here, Windows 95 was billed as 4.00.950 and OSR2 was 4.00.1111. And of course, Windows 98 Second Edition was 4.10.2222A. So this is, again, in the middle, exactly like Windows 96 would have been. Now, just taking a look around the operating system, as I said, nothing really is special here. This all looks practically like Windows 95. So what was the point of Windows 96? Why was this ever a thing? And why is it important? I mean, even the README still says August 1995 for the README agreement. But like I said, why would you want to take a look at this if it's exactly the same as Windows 95? Well, there are some behind the scenes features here. Microsoft had claimed that Nashville would add internet integration features to the Windows 95 and NT 4.0 desktop, which is building on the features in the Internet Explorer 3.0 browser, which was for release a few months before Nashville. Some touted features included a file manager and a web browser, the ability to seamlessly open Microsoft Office documents from inside Internet Explorer using an ActiveX technology, and of course a way to place dynamic web pages directly on the desktop instead of our regular standard wallpaper. So these are all features that ended up becoming features in later versions of Windows, but not here. They're not really seen here. I mean, even opening properties on my computer still says Windows 95 and opening Winver still says Windows 95. So other than the command prompt, and I think that's the kernel, nothing has changed. It just says Nashville and it's a different build number. Maybe there's some under the hood things that have changed. However, I can't figure it out. Just for fun, we can go ahead and then try to install VMware tools. Although, I mean, it's so similar to Windows 95, it might just run. Usually at this point, there would be an error message, but I think it's gonna run. All right, so we can go ahead and just go through typical VMware tools installation. Setup was already running and we are getting errors already, 2510. Uh, let's go ahead and install the latest HTML help engine and the HTML help. And that should be all we need to do. Although setup has failed to install the SVGA driver, so we're gonna have to install that manually, which it'll give us instructions on how to do that. So here are the instructions on how to, of course, install. We need to go to change display type, have disk. I thought we had to go back that way, apparently not. We're going to go ahead and copy this. And here it is, it is actually working. I was not really expecting this to work. Go ahead and click apply and okay. Let's go ahead and restart Windows 95, which it says it's Windows 95, but it's actually Nashville. This is also an issue you can run into, which is a Windows protection error. To fix this, just simply reset the virtual machine and when it brings us to safe mode, which it does, just go ahead and select normal and skip all these. Now we should be able to set Windows Nashville as a better resolution. Okay, the display adapter is not configured correctly. I have no clue what I did wrong, but this is Windows Nashville build 999. Very interesting to see how they really didn't change anything between Windows 95 and Windows Nashville. In fact, most people don't even know Nashville ever existed, which is also something very interesting that I found out. So with that being said, this was Windows Nashville. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.